Talking about Berlin and stuff, there's this really, really cool development I saw courtesy of The Guardian, which is really interesting news. It says here, pan-European sleeper train to sweep Britons to Berlin from May 2023. Credit, right? Like, we haven't had something like this in a long, long, long time. So it says here, um, it hasn't been easy time for rail enthusiasts, but the resurgence of the sleeper train on the continent is offering Brit British travellers a tantalising prospect for 2023. A new pan-European service starting in May is opening up the possibility of jumping on a Eurostar at St Pancreas on a Friday afternoon and waking up in Berlin the following morning. Breakfast included. People that eat breakfast on these type of things are legit psychopaths, I think, isn't it? It's like bringing a burger on an airplane. It's like, come on, man. Just drink some water and go to sleep. Anyway, continued. A new pan of European service starting in May is opening up the possibility. So again, I've made it again. Um, passengers of the European sleeper service would only need to make one change in Brussels. Fortuitously, the scheduling offers just enough time for a swift Belgian beer with cheese and mustard before the Berlin beckons. We thought that it would be a good time to start the weekend, said Chris Inglesman, the co-founder of the European sleeper service. So as you can see here from the map, if you're not watching this, the map basically it shows you the rough route that they're going to take so from london it would stop at calais lille then in belgium it would go to brussels antwerp and then in netherlands it'll be rotterdam amsterdam and then as it crosses over into germany hanover and then berlin which is pretty pretty cool i'm not gonna lie and then towards um, or from 2024 onwards, it's going to go to Dresden in Germany and then into Prague as its final destination, the Czech Republic, which is pretty amazing. I know from myself included or myself, this would be definitely an option to go to Berlin more so than planes, even though it's going to be a slower journey. I'd imagine it'd probably take anywhere between this is an estimate in my head i'm thinking two to four hours to probably get there and i think if i'm not mistaken a ryanair jet leaving from stansted or luton or south end whatever gets to berlin in about an hour and a half so it'll probably be double the time maybe a little slightly more but what you do get the advantage of if you do go on a sleeper train or you go on a train in general to you know travel continental europe is that you get the ability to bring way more in your luggage or just to bring as much as you want basically that you can fit into the cart which makes it so so much better than going on a flight because that's one thing that kills um any sort of bargain you're going to get on a Ryanair flight right because I paid recently for a flight to go to Berlin and the, the flight itself was like 40 pounds but then to add a check-in luggage it's 40 per flight to add the um, cabin luggage is 20 something per flight it kind of just slowly but surely increases the amount of it and then you add on top of it the um, Heathrow Express or whatever or Stansted Express that you're going to get to the airport um, it doesn't make things too easy because London as weirdly connected as it is there are no real easy connections to the airport you still have to pay an extra kind of toll to get to the airport um, maybe some most places are like that but it would be nice if we had a train that actually went to the airport we don't actually have one especially to places like Stansted you still have to get a specific Stansted Express from Liverpool Street that kind of takes you there and then that's obviously another 20 pound maybe 40 on the way back so it kind of easily adds another 50 to 100 quid onto your t plane ticket but with this you essentially play a fat rate to go to London to Berlin there's no bonuses needed on top I think it's like 150 I think they said in an article or something on those kind of lines which I think is a real bargain like I said it also kind of allows your ability to kind of go crazy with the outfits and legitimately I would go and have like one outfit per day I can pack into my luggage and go and really kind of floss out and stuff that's what I'm kind of looking forward to it continues it says the announcement of the services has been hailed as a triumph by the rail aficionados who may have been suffering something of an existential crisis during the recent strikes and service troubles in Britain it also follows a very new dawn for the sleeper train in europe across the continent new routes have been opening up in recent years including brussels to prague and graz in austria and Hamburg to stockholm a trend that is partly a response to the increase in air fuel costs and ever growing understanding of the environment to damage of flying not really i know a lot of my continental european friends they've been used to this life for a long time like friends i have that have grown up in or are from places like spain france italy and stuff they have spent a lot of their summers you know traveling with their family to different parts of europe mostly on trains and part of the fun of that journey was to get on a cool fun train where you got to see cool sites where it was kind of you know you got to sleep in there maybe you got to eat something and um, meet some other kids in the train it just kind of became like a little thing it was kind of a, a far more 
um, more it's far more enjoyable version of going on like a coach somewhere. But that's something a lot of people did. And obviously in the UK, we never really had that privilege because for whatever reason, the trains here just don't, you know, work that well, or maybe the demand for it wasn't as high. But maybe now with Brexit, maybe that's kind of increased it because we want to have some level of connection with the EU still. I'm not really too sure, but either the reason I'm still infused and really excited to kind of get on those. It continues here. It says the first 10 carriage sleeper from Berlin to Brussels will depart on the 25th of May with Brussels to Berlin service scheduled for the following evening, 1922. There will be free services a week with prices for 49 for a seat, 79 for a cochette, a seat that converts into a bed and 109 for a berth in a more comfortable sleeper corner. Uh, compartment sorry mark smith who writes for the popular blog the man seat in 61 the high speed trains are a way to travel but for longer distances such as brussels and thermal berlin to six or seven oh it's not jesus i said four he's saying it's going to be six to seven hour journey it takes half a day a sleep allows you to leave after a full day's work of sightseeing and sleep your way on your own bed so i guess if you wanted to do it so i guess if i went to get there for the Friday evenings, I'd probably have to leave there Thursday. I'd probably leave here Thursday, and then I'd get there Friday evening or maybe Friday morning, dependent. So that's pretty decent still. I'd definitely pay that. Um, and again, the prices are pretty nice as well. Um, they actually are far better prices than Eurostar to Paris. I think it's really difficult to find Eurostar to Paris return for less than a hundred euros. I don't think they exist as kind of flight. So that's pretty interesting to see. And yeah, I'm really eager to see how that kind of develops. And if anything, this will definitely, I feel like be a reason for people to get back on top of the whole like um techno tourism thing that i was doing for a long time prior to the pandemic where i was able to go to all these cool clubs in europe that i sort of obsessed over because of you know being recommended to them via articles on ra event reviews electronic beats when it was really good mix mag back in the day dj mag um white ear but all these places where people djs or people involved in dance music culture would kind of have interviews and talk about their upbringing and where they got their first residencies from and whatnot i check those out and that's how i think i found out but places like club i'm a club the amateurs which if i'm not mistaken is in um is it munich or is it dortmund I don't know, somewhere in Germany. Don't 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 hold me on it. But Club the Amateurs, which is where Lena Wilkins and the other dude who I think has got like a Slavic name, he's from and they sort of played their residence. I kind of learned about that entire scene through reading all those publications and that's kind of got my, you know, kind of got me itching to go and travel across Europe and find all these cool places to go and party. So I can only imagine what this train's gonna do for other people who maybe weren't as eager as i was prior to go on a plane and go somewhere but maybe jumping on the train with a couple of mates or just going on your own for a couple of days would probably be a little bit easier to go and enjoy but yeah i'm definitely involved definitely hyped for it and that definitely gives me something to look forward to in the summer in terms of trips i can do and maybe it means i can go to these places that i like to go to such as berlin a lot more often um because i got the ability to kind of take all my stuff with me like little things are important like the ability to take you know um moisturizer and my own shower gel my own loofah all these things i have to go to a flipping rothman to go and buy and go to an audi or Lidl, which is annoying kind of you know when you go to holiday i just want to kind of get in i want to shower i want to change i want to go around and see the size i want to go there and start buying groceries and toiletries and whatnot it just gets annoying so it's nice to have the ability to buy all this to bring my toiletries i use at home with me without having to kind of pay extra for the luggage and obviously i've got the ability to also bring different outfits for every single day Imagine the big stepper out there, big, big stepper.